Hey, I hope everyone's doing well. Joining me in a couple minutes is Jaron Kerr, AKA DJ Kersey. He's grown up in Windsor, Essex, and he's a really successful DJ here. And I think it's important that we tell a story and help inspire people that are looking to start their own business. So just a moment here as he joins us. So let's welcome Jaron Kerr, AKA DJ Kersey out in Windsor, Essex. He's a DJ, he's doing it well. He's performed with Loud Luxury, Fetty Wap, Rich the Kid, Twins, some really big names out here in Windsor, Essex. And I think it's important that he comes on and he helps inspire those looking to start a small business um, here in our community. So I'm just gonna accept him in. Hey buddy, what's, what's going on? Hey, how are you? Going? Good, good. What's going, man? Can you hear me okay? Keeping busy. Yeah, I can hear you perfect. Can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Yeah, so yes. thanks, for, thanks for joining perfect. this. I appreciate it. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. So I I did a, a brief introduction about your, your DJ in Windsor, Essex. I mean, you're pretty active here in the community. You've performed with some really big names, Loud Luxury, Fetty Wap, Rich the Kid, The Twins. Yep. And uh, you started at the age of 15 and now you're growing and you're booked at Ever After Music Festival. So, so I think that's important that people are able to see that small businesses and DJs can kind of make it big here in Windsor, Essex. So thanks yeah, for joining absolutely. me. Yeah, no problem, man. How's things been? Good, good. good. Just uh, doing these live streams and trying to bring on some people in the community to share their stories. So for sure. glad to have you. It's good to keep busy. You try to, right? Yeah, exactly. So... <laughs> So for the people watching, walk me through how did how did your DJ business start? Uh yeah, okay. So it, it started in uh as in high school. I just I used to play drums since like the age I was like six or seven. Um and I used to be really good good at the drums and eventually it got to the point where my drum coach uh was moving out to British Columbia. So I couldn't have a drum coach anymore. And it was either, you know, move to something else or like drive to Windsor back and forth every day to to get drum lessons and it, it was kinda not feasible with you know, only being in whatever grade I was. Um, so then I kind of started to teach myself uh, programs online, like through my computer, as far as like music production, um, and like downloaded these cheap ass little music softwares just to get, try and teach myself. Um, and I just started to learn and learn and learn more. So then I eventually just saved up some money um, and bought myself this little like uh, DJ controller. Okay. Um, and then from there, it was kind of just, you know, start to buy more stuff, start to like just keep practicing and keep uh, building like off the skills that I already have. Yeah. Um, so I was learning to, to mix different styles of music uh, and stuff like that. And then the work kind of got around that I was getting into it. And I didn't tell many people about it just because I was just doing it for fun. Um, and then, you know, kids in high school have parties and stuff. So then they need music. They need big speakers. So it's loud for everyone here. So um I think the first time I DJed a party, I was in grade 10. It was probably a bunch of grade 12s. It was, you know, just yeah. going on. I think I made like 15 bucks or 20 bucks for like four or five hours of work. So I did that for a while. Like it was just, I was like, oh, sometime at party, sure. Like if they want me to DJ, I would just go and broad. Like for the first, <laughs> like first, like six months, I was just making like 20 to $50 per thing. It was not yep. worth my time at all, but. Uh, obviously back then I, I, I was starting out, I didn't have much value to me. Um, so moving on, just kept progressing that way. Um, and then a grade, it was grade 10 or grade going into grade 11, either or, um, a teacher at my school got word of the fact that I was getting into like music production and DJing and stuff. Yeah. Um, so he's just like, you know, since you're, you got something going here. I, he's like, I see, I see what you're doing. So he, uh, he's like, I'm going to, if you want, he's like, I'm going to enroll you in this entrepreneurship program. So sure. Why not? Um, so I just went through it and it was a year long process with the district school board. Um, you know, it was once a month we'd go up to the, this place in Windsor and just get taught from business professionals about, uh, you know, starting a small business, everything from finance to accounting, to marketing, to, you know, just everything. So yeah. it was a, it was a long process mm -hmm. to get it started. But after, after I completed it, I got a master's business license, um, you know, I got insurance, I got um, everything you can imagine to start a small business, built a whole business plan, um, and eventually 
the government sent us some uh, grant money just to help kickstart our business further, which is really, really helpful. Helped me buy some more equipment, some more speakers, um, you know, some more lights, just kind of really kickstart being able to do more and more and yeah. more. Um, so that was really cool. Um, so that, that's kind of where it all started. And then from there, just, you know, after that all happened, I was just keep doing more gigs, but I, I was just getting paid more money. Pretty much every high school party within Leamington, Essex, I was kind of DJing, some in Amherstburg. I did a couple in Windsor, some in Lakeshore. Um, and then I DJed my first wedding at 16, which is interesting. Yeah, that um, is interesting. Yeah, which is like, someone's going to let a 16-year-old like trust me in, in DJing <laughs> a wedding, which is, it is what it is. It was a good time. Uh, there's a lot of money in weddings, so it was it was interesting to see. But it's tr- super stressful, right? You're in charge of someone's most important day of their life. So, mm-hmm. um, so I did a couple of those, and it wasn't it wasn't my favorite just because of the stress and like yeah, you know, trying to do four things at once, trying to announce the people walking in and changing the song and and everything on that route. Um, so from there, um, I guess oh, I guess I was still 16. The first time I got. Someone got word of it, and a, a local club in Windsor let me play at their at their venue when I was only yeah, sixteen, yeah, okay. which probably isn't legal, but uh, yeah. it's okay. Um, so after sixteen, played clubs, just kept playing shows and shows. Um, and then by the time I got into university, um, I was playing full time at that same nightclub that had me when I was only sixteen. Yeah, I remember that. Um, yeah. So then, then my first. Uh, first semester at university I was trying to get into frat parties and just really networking with people is the biggest thing and we'll talk about that in a bit um but networking with just individuals around campus um and around the community to try and you know get yourself booked for these bigger shows um allowed me to to play in coming home music festival 2018 to play loud luxury and and meet a bunch of people and just really grow my network and then from there and there go ahead so what what kind of what inspired you to start the whole DJing career and music industry? Um, honestly, I think it was the fact that I've always had a, a love for music. And then the yeah. fact that I, I used to drum and then kind of, because I kind of got not kicked out of it, but because I had to transfer to something else. Um, yeah. I just found, I don't know what I was doing, man. I was younger, but <laughs> uh, I think it was dubs, DVBBS. I don't know yeah, if you've yeah. heard of them. Yeah. So I think I found their song is called Gold Skies or something. And I was like, oh, I love this. Um, and then obviously Martin Garrix came out with uh, yes. with uh, animals, and that obviously changed everything. So it was a it was a matter of fact of just getting influenced by some of those artists, and then I want to do that. I could see myself up there and just kind of portraying that image in my head to 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 get into it. So that was so that's kind of where I started. I, I guess that kind of ties into uh, with your business, with your DJ business. What are some of your future goals, that, or where do you see yourself in the next five years? Um. It's hard to say in the next five years. Obviously, I'm going to hope the best and, like, keep trying to grow and grow and be able to eventually tour around the world or something. Yeah. Obviously, it's a long shot, but that's everyone's dream. And as long as you keep striving at what you're doing and just keep working hard, and honestly, no one can stop you. That's kind of the mentality I've had the whole time is, you know, in high school, everyone would make fun of me because I DJ and do this shit and all that stuff. And it's just like, you know, you can say all you want. And now, now they look at me and they go, dude, you're doing big things. And it's like... Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's, ha- there's changes happens. everywhere. Yeah, that's what happens when you work hard and you just don't don't let others that's influence up. you. So, um, as far as certain goals, like to be able to play another another show in like another country or another state, like being able to go over the border to play for a show or something, that would be really cool. Um, obviously, if you could if you could play at on. one show, what, what what show would it be? Like a music festival? Any any festival? Any show? <laughs> Obviously, uh, oh, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. Uh, I obviously I would say Tomorrowland because it's one of the biggest festivals. Okay. Uh, that'd be insane. But yeah. you know, there's Lost Lands, there's uh, Ultra Miami, there's um, there's so many festivals. Burning Man. That... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, they're all. Uh, there's so many out there that uh, no matter where you go there's always going to be people there to support you, right? That's what people go there for is to listen to music yeah. and just vibe out. So, yeah. So, for anyone watching, if there, there may be people watching that are looking to start up a small business. It could be, it could be lawn cutting. It could be another yeah. DJ business. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> what, what would be some advice that you could give to somebody who's just looking to start out? 
Especially here um, in Windsor, Essex. Yeah, yeah. Especially now during these times, it's you know everything's pretty up in the air, and like yeah. no, nothing, nothing's going to be the same after all this is over. Which who knows when that will be. Um, but literally, it's just the matter of the fact of you know you don't have to be in business school to start a business. You don't have to. Yeah. You could be in biology. You could do whatever you want. Um, it's a matter of fact of being able to find your passion and find whatever you like to do mm-hmm. and just find a way to monetize it and be able to make money off of it. So, you know, if you're a creative person and, and you do art, you know, make the art, set up a website and and put it on there, you know? Yeah. Uh, the biggest thing is, is having a network, right? You know this, we're in business school together is yeah. being on the network and having those connections. And, you know, if you know this person, they know that person and it's, it's easier to get into places and it's easier to do things if you know a lot of people. Right. Um, so as far as, you know, someone just, if you have a hobby, let's say photography, let's say, um, lawn cutting, like you said, um, the biggest thing I could say, um, is it just invest in yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, if you like doing something and, and you, and you like, you're truly passionate about it, then don't care what anyone else says and just strictly just, you know, do it. if you have to take if you have to take a loan out of, out of the bank, just yeah. do it. Like, uh, eventually, money comes around, goes around. I always pride myself in saying, you know, I could die tomorrow, um, so I got to act today and kind of figure out, you know, what can I do today to make tomorrow better. So yeah, exactly. Uh, like, you know, sure, if it's a thousand dollars, couple thousand dollars, you know, ask your parents, ask your family members. You know, uh, there's always ways to to get around having to use your own funds to be able to uh, um, purchase your first assets, I guess you'd call it. Um, You know, if you can apply for a scholarship, apply for a grant um, and use that money to, to buy some stuff to help you kickstart your business. Right. Yeah. So with, with your business, what do you enjoy most about it? What, like, so performing, what do you enjoy most about performing? Um, As far as performing, it's, uh, Man, it, I honestly can't describe it. Every time, even even if it's, I, I mean, it depends, right? For I don't typically do high school parties anymore, but that was different because I knew everyone and everyone's just, you know, there's drunk yeah. and just having fun, whatever. But now if it's for, uh, you know, bigger festivals and, and a lot of people, uh, you know, everything's relying on you. So um, the feeling of being up there is kind of, you know, all, all the attention's on you, right? So, you know, you can't miss a beat. Uh, obviously I practice a lot in advance and kind of know what I'm going to do, uh, plan out, plan out what, what songs I'm going to play at certain points, stuff like that. But the feeling of being up there is just like, you see it's everyone jump. Yeah. It's a thrill, man. It's a, it's adrenaline. It's straight adrenaline. And when I'm up there, it's like, it's done. Like it's, uh, <laughs> it's a movie. It, there's a, <laughs> it, it, is, it, is. it really is. It, it depends on the show, obviously, like I said, but for the yeah. most part, like being up there is a surreal feeling and everyone's there. And when you see everyone having a good time and smiling and like just vibing out, then, it, then obviously you're doing something right. So. so I think, I think last summer you, you did your own show in uh, Kingsville or Leamington, right? Yeah. Leamington. How did, how did that go? What was that like? Yeah. So we can talk a little bit on that. So uh, that show actually originated from me. I think I was, I, I was 16 or 17 and obviously I've, I've always wanted to throw my own like EDM festival and like, yeah, cause try and kickstart something else within the community because there's not a, a whole lot within this area for like younger age people to do. Yeah. And I know, so I know, I know Windsor and Windsor Essex County kind of lacks a music scene. Like it is really hard to grow your brand or grow your, your business as far as music wise in this area. And, and yeah. not, it's not limiting you like, but it, it, I would say it's harder than most other cities or whatever. Right. If you're in Toronto, it's going to be easier. But um, so I pitched the idea to the town council, LinkedIn town council. Um, you know, I spoke, made a whole PowerPoint presentation. Hey, nice. here's what, here's how much money we need. Here's what we need to do. Here's who we can book. We could afford this with this money. Uh, if we sell this ticket at this price, like just gave them everything straight out. And they loved the idea. Everything went through. Um, and it was at the last point where someone just needed to get, needed to give it the green light. And they just said, nope, mm-hmm. we can't, we can't do it this year. Yeah. So obviously I was bummed out and uh, it is what it is. Right. Cause I know they just built the, the brand new amphitheater down there. Yeah. I'm not sure. sure you've seen it yet. Yeah. So um, moving forward, I guess. The Does anyone last watch year, it who went? Put it in the yeah, comments yeah. if you went. Yeah. If any of you guys have questions or anything, just put it in the comments. Yeah. I can see it. 
So uh, if you want to pin a comment, you can do that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so moving forward, uh, last summer, uh, the town approached me and they said, hey, I know we, we still have that same idea of throwing like some sort of, uh, you know, EDM show for younger yeah. generation um, because they do a, a summer concert series. So every every other Friday or whatever, maybe it's the Friday or Saturday, they put on a certain concert for a certain type of crowd and yep. people from the community. It's completely free. You come out with your lawn chairs, whatever, take a seat and you just listen to whatever music is going on. So okay. they texted me or emailed me and said, hey, we're interested in having you uh, come out. Do you have any other artists that would, uh, you know, be interested in like performing before you or whatever? So I, I rat- rattled off a couple names um, and they all got booked. Super f- professional, super fun. Um, it was, you know, we came at, let's say earlier, did sound check. We had our own green room. We had everything set up. They had bottled waters for us. Like it was super professional. Yeah. It was yeah. awesome. So uh, that went on. Show was amazing. I probably had about 150 to 200 people come out, oh, which is perfect. super cool to see. Like, you know, I wouldn't, I would, I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that for so many people to come out and see me. So yeah, yeah, it was that's, really, really cool to see. That's great that you had that that support. And it looks like for DJing, there's a lot of. Uh, it's not just performing, but it's a lot of event planning that goes into yeah, the it process. Is. It is. It is. I mean, uh, once you once you grow your network more and your name more, it's it's a lot of, it's a lot less of work in in a sense. Yeah, because you have you're gonna have other people doing stuff for you, whereas now it, now I'm in the stage of trying to figure out what I need to do to get bigger and get bigger and keep growing and yep. obviously there's a lot that comes with that. So, so yeah. kind of on that topic with with growing, there's there's definitely um, denial. It looks like somebody has a question. What's the best way to deal with denial from uh, oh, dude, Salad Bus Seventy One? Yeah, Saliba, what's up, buddy? Um, yeah, man, all the time denial. Is, it's it's part of life, right? No matter what type of job you have, or what you know, if you're in your own small business, if if you get, if you're denied by someone, and whether that's I got denied all the time, whether it was because of a pricing issue or something like that, you just got to move forth and move yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. It's it, it, you know what I realized that people aren't willing to pay, and if if you don't value yourself, um, and you're just gonna take a gig just because it's money, then yeah. you're not doing it right. You're not doing it right. You're, yeah, you're, exactly. You have to value your talent, value your time, value your assets, value everything. And if if people are denying you just because of a certain price, well, that's their loss, right? That's that's yeah, what you're it, look it, at it. it definitely. Oh, Windsor Spitz in the house. Hey, what's awesome. up, Windsor Spitz? How are you, Canada, Furda? <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> um, in here. Yeah, I, I love all this support. There's so many people joining us to talk about Jaron's story as a uh, a, a DJ. Um, he's made it pretty big on the stages with Loud Luxury, Fetty Watt versus the Kid, uh, the Twins. I think they're a local DJ yes, uh, business around here. So he, he's doing it well. And we're hoping that today's live stream inspires some people to start their own business. For sure. Um, so for the people that are watching, hey, what's up, Faith? Thanks for, thanks for supporting. Um, could you walk us through kind of the process that you take when you're getting ready before a show? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So anyone that's in the music industry, you know, it's a lot of practice and a lot of time. Um, as far as my end, um, depending on the show, depending on the festival. Hi, Rita. How are you? Hi, Callan. Hi, my brother's in the other room. What's up, Chris Coop? Um, <laughs> got a lot of people in here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's awesome. in here. Uh, Another question here. Ten, yeah, t- pin that comment. I'll, I'll look at it after. So as far yeah. as the show prep, um, so depending on the gig, let's say I'll explain it as far as the Winterfest. Um, so I knew it was, it was a wrap. Um, you know, Rich the Kid was headlining, so I kind of knew what the crowd was going to be um, and what I kind of had to prepare for. So what I do ten- tentatively is I kind of gauge what type of crowd is going to be there, um, and then I obviously just get a bunch of songs that I think that would be suitable for my set. Yeah. Um, and obviously depending on the time slots. So typically, you know, if you're not headlining, you shouldn't be playing all the the best songs that someone else might play. Or that might tire out the crowd, right? You're there to just warm up the crowd and get get yep. everyone going. Um, so what I do is I bring all these songs into a certain folder, um, go through it, see what BPMs they're at, what keys they're at, see what matches, um, see what songs are, are new. Um, mm-hmm. You look at the top charts. Um, so then what I do with that is I have a program called FL Studio. Um, and basically just go in there and, and make my own edits and make my own mashups and kind of just – make stuff sound different and make stuff my own unique stuff. So when people hear it, they're like, Whoa, I've never heard that before. You know, it's might be enticing to them. Yeah. Um, so that's probably that. 
once I get past that stage, um, depending on how much time I have, so if it's a half and a half an hour time slot or an hour time slot, then I know, okay, if it's half an hour, I can probably only do, you know, 12 to 15 songs, depending on how fast it is, right? Uh, if it's an hour time slot, then it's probably closer to 30 songs or 32 or 35 songs, right? So then from there, I organize it in my program, okay, color code it. Um, and I put it in a certain order so I can, you know, go one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then what I do, as soon as I have, like, the set playlist, I record it. So what I do is I, you know, have my DJ board and my equipment here, and I record it all. Um, and basically from there, I record it. I listen back multiple times, and I say, okay, not good there, perfect there. And then I also see the timing. So if I say – Okay, I got to the last song and I still have two minutes left. I need to add another song. So then I yeah, you got to do you know, that. Add another song. On the spot. Yeah, you just keep going, keep going until you have the perfect set. I send it off to some people that I trust to listen, and they give me some feedback. Hey, you need to tweak this here, tweak this there, um, and then I kind of change my stuff based on that. Then on show day, um, you go before and you bring your equipment or whatever you need to bring. Yeah, yeah. And you have sound check. So, you know, you do mic tests and, and test it on the sound system, get it ready. And then pre-show, I like to just chill out with friends and, like, kind of not think about what I'm going to do. Obviously, I yeah, get excited. No, exactly. It, it's nerve-wracking, right? Yeah. So uh, I like to be with my family, too, depending on the show. They like to yeah. come backstage and hang out and just, you know, be with people that I'm comfortable with. Um, and then you go out on stage and you, you do what you've been doing in your bedroom, practicing. Yeah, and that's, exactly. that's about it. Yeah. So let's, it's all about – uh, I'll answer that question in a second, but it's all about uh, working with the crowd. So, oh, hundred um, percent. There's, there's been time. There's been times, man, where it's uh, I've been playing, and you think you think you're doing good, and it thinks you know what you have in your set list is good, but the crowd is it's mm, it's not too hot, right? So you have to switch things up in the spot. So, oh yeah, uh, you got to know your yeah, audience about, too. What what exactly. songs you're playing, right? For you're sure. You're not gonna go sure. to uh, Rich the Kid concert and play some country. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> definitely not. Definitely not. Okay, uh, underscore Ali974, do you have any secret of being success? <laughs> um, <laughs> do I have any secret of being success? Um, no, dude, I, I don't have any secrets. It's no secrets other than being able to work hard um, and staying determined on, on your on your purpose, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, you can't let other people influence you no matter, no matter what you're doing, no matter what hobby you have, no matter what. Like no matter what you're doing, with it, whether it's within your own job or within your own passion or interests and hobbies, yeah, uh, you just gotta. If, if people are giving you negative feedback and, and hate, then they're losers. No offense. Like <laughs> if they're if they're taking the time out of their day to push you down and, and yeah, you know, make you feel bad and stuff like that, then they're not worth your time. So you just gotta yeah, prove I, them wrong. That's what I do. Exactly, and surround yourself around people that are yeah. uh, successful, like-minded well, people. Right? Exactly. exactly. Mm-hmm. So I hope that answers your question, Allie. Uh, I saw I saw another one here. Uh, let's see. I think this kind of uh, esports team and a podcast. That's awesome. Um, I believe. Yeah. So if you're looking to start that, I think probably the, the next step is just do it. Um, yeah. Honestly, this is this is the perfect time now. I guess I'll speak on it now. This is yeah. This is the perfect time to start something before. Um, wow. There's a bunch of people that joined that I didn't see. Hi guys. How are you? Um, you know, now so we if have you have any time. questions, put them in the comments. Yeah, put them in the comments for sure. But uh, now's the time to start up anything you want. Like, you know, even if you guys need any help with anything, I can try and help kickstart your business. But um, exactly. no problem, buddy. No problem. Um, just honestly, I can tell everyone, if you're going to go into a job or anything like that, you got to do what makes you happy. And, like, if you're going to go to a job and wake up 9 to 5 every day and hate your life, then you shouldn't be doing it. So Exactly. So. Yeah. For the people who are watching, I think I think they want to see some behind the scenes stuff. What is what's your equipment? Do you, are you able to show some of your equipment, what you're using? And yeah, yeah, for sure. I can. Uh, I don't have it all with me. I'm back back home with my parents currently. So, gotcha. Obviously, I got a little bit of studio stuff. So oh, I that's got sweet. Uh, just my school laptop. I got my monitors, studio monitors, Beats, cables, whatever. Yeah. Got yeah. my photography stuff. Uh, this is my DJ board, which I like to keep protected with a little, you know, towel. Yep. This is my DJ laptop. Got a bunch of programs on there. And then this is just the other monitor. So um, I have a bunch of other stuff, but obviously I don't have it out. I like to keep a, a clean desk, clean slate. Clear oh, exactly. Mind. 
clear mind. Yeah. Exactly. How do you how do yeah. you manage how do you manage work versus pleasure, free time, social life? How do you do that? Uh, for sure. Alex, good question. Uh, for people watching, what's up? What's up? Um, so work versus pleasure. So if you're doing something that's pleasure to you, it's not work. It's uh, for example, when when I do when I DJ and stuff, and I'm working on music, it's it's not work for me. It's fun. Yeah. Um, you know, I've realized that you you can't get any worse. You can't you can't devolve yourself unless you t- completely take yourself out of the game. So me, you know, taking time to just keep learning and learning and learning and, and develop myself, then I'm I'm never gonna be uh, behind. I'm just gonna keep moving forward. So mm-hmm. for those who for those who are in their own jobs right now, let's say you're a grocery store worker, um, and you work let's say nine to five, and your pleasure is doing photography or something, then there's still the other 13, 14, 15 hours a day, however long it is, to go do something else, right? Um, take take advantage of all the days that you have off to, to do something else that makes you happy. Um, yeah. And manage your time, right? If if you can monetize yourself in doing what makes you what's, what gives you pleasure, then then go full in with that and quit your other job. That's all I could say. We're we're most of the people that are watching right now. We're super young. Like this is the time to. Uh, oh yeah. This is the time to just do what makes you happy and and learn new skills and be able to make money just on your own. Right. Just like yeah. you, you're starting this little podcast here and it's, it's, it's good to see people from the community just trying to start their own thing and not rely on other people to give them work. Right. So I, I agree. And right now everyone's looking at social media. It's the time to, to jump on social no. media. If, you're, mm-hmm, if sure. you're, if you're not, then I think you're losing out. So get online and do what you can while people are watching. For sure. What's up, Matt? Nice What's up? up? You got another question? Do you have any goals? If so, do you write them down? Yes, dude, absolutely. So, uh, in not only about goals, but uh, you know, I always have goals in my mind, and I write down everything in my phone. Uh, for example, if I'm going day to day tasks, I write down what I have to get done, and I just go down and cross them off. Um, as far as long term goals, they're in my phone. Yeah, they're on my they're on my whiteboard in my room in, in at school, and I read it every day. Wake up, read it. Um, other than goals, though, too, I just write motivational stuff to keep me going. You know, my roommate's in here, too. He knows he knows they got <laughs> all the stuff there just to keep me motivated and keep me positive And, you know, whatever happens, happens. But uh, you just got to keep moving forward. So, awesome. yes, I would encourage writing down your goals for sure. Visualizing what's, what you want. What's one way you keep yourself motivated for working out in your own personal goals? Oh, shoot. One, one way to keep yourself motivated for sure. <laughs> David, you're funny. Uh, so one one way to keep myself motivated is just doing these things that make me happy. And, you know, sometimes you get cre- creative block and, like, you, you don't want to do it. So take a break. Like, like there's been times where I'm just – I get so frustrated. And, and especially with making music, I get frustrated. Um, and you, sometimes you just need a break. Um, so take that break. Give, give yourself time to learn and, and, and just kind of understand who you are and your mind and your body and – and then mm-hmm. get back to it. And if you're still lacking inspiration, then then talk to someone else that can uh, give you the inspiration to keep moving forward. Um, as far as working out on your own personal goals, yeah, just like I said, write them down and keep visualizing it. Right? Read, read, and put um, what you want into into intuition, and it, it will come into existence for sure. That's so, so true. Just, just just believe it. Believe in yourself. What's up, Faith? What's up, Calvelli? <laughs> Faith, Faith's got a question here. What are your goals for the next five to ten years? Five to ten years. So we discussed this a little bit earlier, but I can uh, kind of repeat what I said. Um, five to ten years. Um, so for sure, I want to have my own original music out, you know, albums, songs, and stuff like that. Um, that's what really set me apart from other people. What's up, Chelsea? Yeah. What's up, Claire? Um, but as far as other goals, being able to play in other festivals, um, honestly, Veld would be my next goal. Um, okay. I got an ever I got ever after fest this year, so that'll that'll be another big goal, mm-hmm. and I think I can do it, and I will do it. I'll show you. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> that's what I say. <laughs> Literally, that's all you got to do is just put it into existence. That's what I said, and it's funny. My brother, uh, we go to music festivals together all the time, and he's like, "Oh, you gotta buy your ticket. You know, it's going on sale tomorrow." <laughs> I was like, "I was like, nah, I'm not buying it because I'm gonna get in the festival." So. Um, you know, I hit this guy up on Facebook. I met him last year. He was a manager for another artist. I said, Hey, do you have any connections with ever after? Um, if you do, let me know. He said, yeah, sure. Connected with that guy, got connected with another guy, sent them some music, sent them, sent them some other stuff. And that's how you get booked. 
right? I think it's all about it's like a stepping stone, right? You you play oh, yeah, Ever After, they see yeah. that they're gonna they want to hire you for for Feld, yep. right? Yeah, that's what I mean. I can't I can't go any lower than what I'm at right now. I just got to keep growing and keep building on myself. So exactly. Yeah. What's up, Brock? How are you, buddy? Did you ever wish to be anything other than a DJ? Why don't you talk about your uh, your other business? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Good question. Good question. And this is this is perfect timing. Is like I said, is we have the time right now to explore different interests. Yes. So currently, I got my got my little camera here. Um, so I do photography on the side a little bit. So um, this is a perfect time. Like you don't have to just do one thing. Um, you can have sublets of multiple different passions or different hobbies that you can monetize to to be able to make money off of. And it's not all about money either, right? So if you're, if whatever you're doing makes you happy, then you're, you're honestly winning at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So, so as far as being anything else than a DJ, uh, there's a lot of things that I want to do in life. So I don't, I honestly don't plan to do this for my full life, uh, whole life, I guess it's not my own ultimate life goal. Um, yeah. But I'm, that's like, I'm just going to keep running with it and see as far as I can go until my lungs give out. Right. Different it's thing. a hobby. It's a passion, right? <laughs> yeah, so, for sure. Yeah. If anyone has any questions for uh, for Jaren, please put them in the comments. We're happy to answer them. Um, I bet you in a, in a couple minutes here, he might give us a little teaser and stuff he's working on some some songs he's yeah, working I can do on. That. So, what's up, Cameron? How are you? What's up, Mitch? What's up, Brock? Jonathan says, "Has there been a worst moment when oh, performing?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, you'd be surprised. Uh, more than not. Um, so when performing, it depends, right? So there's been multiple times where I've been doing my own show. So I bring my own equipment there. Yeah. Um, and sometimes, depending on the location of where you're setting up, uh, you know, you have to run certain cables to certain outlets and stuff like that. <laughs> and there's been so many times where people step on the cord and it pulls out of the outlet or someone just walks over there and just unplugs it and everything goes out, all the lights, all the speakers and stuff like that. Yeah. So there's been a couple moments where it's, I'm just, I'm the only one there. And everyone's like, oh, what's going on? Making a big deal. And you just got to know how to act quickly in the, to get everything back up and running. But there's been a couple of times where um, worst moment as far as like hopping on the microphone thinking it's on and it's not. So everyone can see you're talking <laughs> to it and it, it's not on. That's a classic um, one. Yeah. So, yeah, I would say that's a worst moment. But there's no I, – I keep everything pretty professional. So when, I, when I'm performing, I don't – there's – never been a worse moment that I pinpoint that. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's all about planning and preparing before you jump on the stage. That's the biggest thing. That's the biggest thing is preparing for it. So I know any other artists or musicians in here know it's all about practice and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So yeah. So what, if you guys have any other questions. Yeah. Any, any questions, drop them. He's going to show us in uh, a couple minutes here, some, some teasers and some songs he's working on. One of his goals is to, you know, write and produce his own music. So he's definitely going to get that accomplished. For sure, um, let me, uh, I'll bring some stuff up here. Um, I got some stuff ready, but I'll bring up another thing. Sweet. I'll kind of give you a little rundown on what goes on with... Uh, yeah, there's definitely a lot that goes down with, with DJing, so many different buttons. I yeah. I always see like uh, videos. I know Remo uh, Augustino in, in Windsor is doing a bunch of DJ Online live stuff. stuff yeah. So yeah, I can, I can sure. see all the different moves you have to do. Thoughts, Thoughts on the new Travis, Travis Scott? Scott. <laughs> to be honest, dude, I, I have not heard it. Um, <laughs> I don't listen to a lot of rap and stuff like that. More of like electronic music. So yeah, what's um, your favorite artist, electronic music wise? Ooh, dude, I have so many. It, it ranges, honestly. I, to have a favorite is hard, but I'd say Martin Garrix. Okay. Probably, probably up there. Who's second? So who's second? Honestly, Odessa. I love Odessa. Okay. Have you ever heard of Odessa? No, I feel like more chill vibes, more travel, futuristic vibes, like just relax too. So mm -hmm. let's see what I can pull up here. Okay, that's good. So I'll just kind of uh, show my screen, kind of explain. It's just opening. What goes on? Behind the scenes, DJ Kersey. With coffee with Craner. Exactly. Thanks for everyone for joining. Uh, yeah, we Brock, appreciate it. Brock says Odessa's dope, Jaren. Hell yeah, man. It's awesome. Okay, <laughs> so uh, here's a little project. This, is, this isn't a song. This is just a mashup. Okay. So this is, pretty, this is a pretty basic one, to be honest. But what I'll do is I'll blow it up so you can see. Okay, so at the top here, we have uh, a song called Porter Robertson. It's called Language. So okay. let's see if you can see this good here. 
So here's another song. So it sounds like this. One second. Gotta crank if anyone it up. has any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. I appreciate everyone joining us today and taking time out of your Saturday to. Uh... Yeah, for sure. There you go. Can you hear it? Yeah. Is it clear? It is. Okay. So as you can see here, this is just a, a song called Porter Robinson. It's a good song. So what I did is I took that song and you have to look at everything as far as like the key, the BPM and stuff like that. So here I can see it's 128 up here. Um, then you got all your time stamping here. So your bars, you know. So what I did is I listened to it and I'll shut this off for a second. So right here, there's a break. So this is like what I said earlier is the fact of being able to take something like this and kind of making it your own unique thing. Yeah. So what I did is that I found the key in the BPM and I, I thought of a song that might mix well. So I guess I'll mute this or take it out. So what I did was I took the song by Post Malone, I Fall Apart, and I made it into an acapella. Okay. So now it sounds like this. That's sick. So I'll speed it up a bit, but it's just the aspect of adding something to another song and adding a different layer. So, you know, let's say someone doesn't know the song Language by Porter Robinson, but, you know, everyone knows Post Malone, I Fall Apart. So, you know, when you play it out loud and live, then yeah, people get into it. They, they sing along with it, right? So I'll listen to the little build up here. That's so as you can see like the song itself the acapella is building up with that song so it's all about layering and like finding certain parts of the song yeah, so, like, yeah. so i go through the whole song and i see what vocals fit well with the lyric or with the other song that's playing in the background it's kind of just being able to understand what fits with what. Mm -hmm. So I can bring up another one and show you how to do that. <laughs> LDSS product. <laughs> Hell yeah, Lincoln. That's my boy Cameron from day one. Where's everyone joining us from? Yeah, where's everyone joining us from? I'm not being here right now. <laughs> Anyone from Aberg? We can't drop you. Here we go. So it's just the idea of that, right? And then it breaks down again. There we go, Josh Betty from Aver. Here we go. So, buddy. So you can see here the vocals are chopped up, so they're different parts of the song. Aver in the house. What's up? <laughs> So that's the same aspect there, right? So uh, let me bring up something else here. So that's that's what I like to call uh, a mashup. So I, I don't call that a remix. That's just a mashup. Hey, Berg. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, we have another question here. Have you ever thought about making a mashup that could potentially go viral on TikTok? Yeah, dude. Actually, you know what? Now that you say that, I'll bring it up. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah, dude. I've always... Uh, I, I mean, I, I, to be honest... Did you... I saw. I did. I did one. I did a little coronavirus one. one. Yeah, but I did another one here. Let me find it. Um, Corona time. Yeah. Let me let me find it. I have a lot What's of up, projects Bryce? here. Let me show you how many how many different projects I have. So each one of these is like a different type of project. So Damn. let's just scroll down a little bit. You probably spend hours just listening to music and. Oh yeah, man. So let's just keep going and keep going and keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot here. There's a lot of potential. Some of them are stupid. Some of them are good. So it's a lot of trial and error. But you learn every time I do it, right? Yeah. You find it. But as far as your question, yeah, I have. I have. Actually, you know that Board in the House song? It's like I'm Board yeah. in the House. Yeah. I like made like this little beat to it, but I didn't like it. So I just, I just stopped it. Let me find this Corona <laughs> one. Board in the House. There's that one. 
Okay, let me search it. How's everyone doing during quarantine? What's everyone up to? How do you get the vocals? Bryce, um, if you get the vocals, you can search it online. Look up uh, a certain song, acapella version, and then you can download it. Or um, in the program here that I have, you can actually edit out the background of the song and like with filters okay. and stuff. So, yeah. What, what software is, do you use again? One. So this is FL Studio 20. Okay. So, yeah, I don't know if you can see it clearly. Okay. So this is a little coronavirus thing that I made as a joke, and now it's not really the a joke anymore. The coronavirus pandemic now moving so fast, things are changing by the hour. Oh, my God! Coronavirus. <laughs> COVID-19. The coronavirus is... COVID-19. Global crisis. It's... It's corona time. I sold my soul to the devil for design, and they say, go to hell. Yeah, so that's the song. I mean... Everyone knows that song. Yeah, so all I did was just literally took clips off of news channels and uh, just inserted it as a joke. I posted it, it got like 3,000 views, nothing crazy. So, so yeah, that's that. But I have thought of taking some TikTok songs and, and remixing them. Remix them yeah, and TikTok, I mean, if you're not on TikTok, get on TikTok. It's blowing up. Yeah, I mean, it's, a good, it's a good way to uh, grow yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I'll play an original here. Thanks, Matthew. Hope you're staying safe as well. Yes, cheers, buddy. Hope you're enjoying your Saturday night watching me and Crainer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I made this. Let's see, where's the date here? I made this probably last year. So I'll play it. Uh oh, we're getting a little uh, DJ Curry sneak peek. <laughs> So yeah, so then it does that, and it comes over to here. So I haven't worked on this, obviously, but. So then there'd be another drop there, so it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's That's one sweet. there. Yeah, it's, uh, I haven't put anything out yet. I won't for a while, unless I'm 100% confident in myself. Just because that's, what? I don't know. Do you have any names for the first album? <laughs> no, not yet. No, not yet. No, no. I haven't. I haven't made enough to, uh, to do that. But one day. Okay, so this is like more tech house stuff. So more like movement Detroit type of stuff. Just okay. like, it kind of sounds the same for like six minutes straight. <laughs> kind of just vibey. Can you hear good? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I am. I am for sure. What's this song called? Oh, uh, honestly, I just wrote Tech House. <laughs> <laughs> Tech House original. There we go. Yeah. So. Call it drop here in a second. If anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to drop them in the comments. Happy to answer them. I appreciate Jaron joining us today. This guy's doing big things in Windsor Essex. Um, so, yeah, let us know if you have any questions. For sure. Yeah, so this is a song. Just kind of you chill out. Same beat, but it's more of a, there's a certain genre. It's a tech house, so it's what people listen yeah. to. So, yeah. And this is like the second drop, I guess you can call it. What are you most excited about after quarantine's over? Ooh, good question. Um, after it's over, man, just to be with friends and be with people, not to be stuck in my house all day. I mean, yeah. I get out of I get out of the house because I can't stand being in here all day. 
So I go for bike rides and just kind of do anything to get get out of the house, really. Um, that's what I'm most excited for is to be able to uh, to go see some friends, go for – well, I mean, I could go for a drive right now, too, but yeah, doing everything to keep cautious and stay safe for currently. So And uh, go out and take pictures and stuff, be able to go film stuff, go travel. Um, I hope it's over soon because I'm planning to go to Germany for the year on okay. exchange. So uh, if I could do that still, it'd be awesome. I got I got everything set to go. So do you have any plans of doing any shows and trying to do some shows in Germany? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's gonna be it's gonna be tough, obviously, because I'm not gonna be able to have my equipment there. Yeah. Um, but I mean, now nowadays, all you have to have is a USB with your music on it, and you're uh, you can just go to any type of well, not any type, but most types of just. DJ stuff, and you should be able to yeah. be, be able to get be able to be good to go. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that'd be really cool if I could do that. But awesome is it? Is it likely? Yeah, we'll see. It's gonna we'll be. Uh, I'll be busy, right? Be able to travel yeah. and like do school at the same time. So for awesome. sure. Well, I, I appreciate you being on here. Everyone, yes, join the chat. I mean, the numbers have been really great. Everyone's supporting and. Sounds like everyone's really really enjoying this behind the scenes with DJ Kersey. This guy's in Windsor, Essex. He's performed with really high name performers, Loud Luxury, Fetty Watt, Rich the Kid, the Twins. Next up, he's headed to Ever After, Ever After Music Festival once this quarantine's all over. So be sure to check Hopefully. him out there. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, for sure. Um, Andre, thanks for tuning in. Yes, thank you, buddy. I appreciate everyone watching, supporting. I know there's only 13 of you guys in here right now, but. Appreciate everyone's support, everyone's Absolutely. time to listen to this. Um, one last thing we could talk about: doesn't matter how old you are, doesn't matter, doesn't matter your age at all. Literally, you can. Uh, I started this when I was 15, mm-hmm. and you know, you never expect to be at such a high high degree of what you're doing, but anything's possible, especially anything's with social possible. media, like you said. Yeah. So, everyone awesome. be safe during their quarantine. Um, love you too, David. Everyone be safe. <laughs> Enjoy your time with your family. Start a new hobby. Do something cool. Exactly. Do what Lyndon's doing. Start a little podcast type of thing. Hey, if, so, if, uh, if anyone's watching, wants to uh, join me on this podcast, I think they have a good idea or some good topic that people would be interested in, shoot me a DM right now. Or if you know of anyone that wants to join, let's, uh, let's try to spread some positivity during quarantine. But, for sure. Try and uh, help any, anywhere you can, whether it's helping someone make masks or donating some money if, you, if you're able to. I know it's hard during times right now. No one can work yep. and stuff like that. But yeah. Awesome. For sure. Thanks for joining me, Jerry. Yes. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. I appreciate Everyone it. Give this guy a follow. Show him some love. And until next time on Coffee with Craner. We'll yes. see you soon. Peace, buddy. Bye.